Last year, I, I gave a little short talk on the fact my brothers and I sort of went on a search to find uh, the submarine that my uh, dad was on in 1942, and it was sunk in somewhere in the Pacific. This is the submarine. It was kind of a World War II thing. So it turns out they're very different from each other. So there were about 300 submarines used in World War II. 52 of them were lost. Uh, let me rephrase that. 52 of them were sunk, and two of them were lost. This is one of them. By lost, they just, you know, just wasn't seen anymore. Uh, this is my dad. He was the commander of the sub, but also there, were, uh, there was a crew of 70, and the uh, men in this uh, picture were the crew. Uh, that's uh, me uh, sitting in my uh, dad's uh, lap, so to speak. And in, um, well, let me uh, say it this way. My middle brother was very interested in researching this and talked to a lot of people, but was unable to really put together a definitive history. He wrote a little paper, which is on a website called Search for the Grunion. The name of the sub was the Grunion. And uh, you're welcome to try it now. It has, has some interesting stories. And in 2002, we came across this guy. His name is Yutaka Iwasaki. He's from Japan, of course. And he's a hobbyist. But he's kind of a World War II history hobbyist. And he uncovered an article uh, in an obscure Japanese maritime journal that described a confrontation of a freight ship with a submarine. That is that freighter. It's called the Kano Maru. And this is sitting in Kiska Harbor in the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. And uh, as this points out here, here's Alaska. The Aleutian Islands is a very long chain. It goes up here to Attu. And here is Kiska. And the Japanese occupied both of those islands uh, in World War II. And that scared the living daylights out of us because we thought that that was sort of the beginning of the occupation of our country. And it was an occupation of the country, although when you visit those islands, you might have said, why don't you stay there? <laughs> uh, and then in 2005, I met this guy, Bob Ballard, and he met with myself, my brothers, and said, uh, you know, we were able to find the Titanic. And at the end of the conversation, I said, you know what? I think we can do that. And so in 2006, we got together with this uh, owner of this crab boat and a, uh, an organization that had uh, a very uh, interesting sonar. And we went up there. This is in actually Adak, an, uh, an adjacent island to Kiska. Uh, and that allowed us to locate some potential targets. And this is the little ROV shack. And uh, this is what we thought could possibly be a submarine. Although, when you look at it, it looks a little bit like a regular surface ship. But uh, we located a number of other targets. And so, uh, after we had that data, they post-processed the data. And they came up with this information. Here's that same sort of target. But I don't know if you can see it, but there's kind of a funny little track. And what they suspect is that is the slide path that this ship was sunk and then slid two thirds of a mile before it came to rest. And this is the crew uh, this year. You uh, may recognize that uh, gentleman, David Gallo, who's here. Uh, and a, a wonderful uh, eclectic uh, group it was. Uh, this is the uh, ship again. Uh, that is located in Kiska Harbor. This is another view of Kiska Harbor from one of the hills. There are no trees on Kiska. It's kind of a combination of Lord of the Rings and lots of fog. <laughs> uh, and that 
is in fact the, the dock that the Japanese uh, built in, uh, uh, for World War II. And in fact, on the island, I won't go into the uh, pictures we have of them, but uh, a lot of the stuff that they built there is still there. The guns, there are many submarines there, few buildings, so forth. It was not a pleasant place to uh, stay. Uh, this is a rather out of focus uh, view of a wind meter. Can you read that? True wind, apparent wind. And can you read that? That's 60 miles an hour. It was up to 75 miles an hour. But fortunately, at that time, we were in the harbor. Uh, this is not a part of the world that is the friendliest from a weather point of view. Uh, you may have seen, uh, what's that, the, the deadliest catch? Well, that, that boat you saw is the type they use in the deadliest catch. And in fact, it was a crab fisherman. Uh, this is us launching this year an attempt to go down and take a look at that thing you saw. This is an ROV, and uh, if you take a look, uh, this is the, the control center. It was uh, put into one of those containers uh, that were stuck on the back of the ship uh, with lots of uh, screens. And this is the front of that ROV with uh, many different cameras. There's four cameras there, and then there's a remote control arm with another camera on it. And these are these very high-intensity lights uh, that we used. Uh, 